Well, good evening, viewers. Today we have a 2015 GMC Sierra. It's a crew cab. Looks like a long crew cab. And it's here for check engine light on. And the customer complains that, well, they said it had a transmission problem. And I asked them if they elaborate. They said sometimes you step on the throttle and it doesn't respond. So it's either a hesitation, a stumble, a surge, a flare, but they couldn't really describe it very well. And they also said it's random. It happens, you know, randomly. It doesn't matter what the temperature is. But the check engine light is on, so we're going to throw a scan tool on this thing and retrieve any fault codes and see if that gives us a hint as to what's going on. So this is a new vehicle record. I've never scanned this vehicle before. The scan tool automatically detected it. Just got my scanner updated, so now there's. Oh, now it's pulling the odometer reading. Oh, that's in miles. 204, 153. And license plate 36620. Let's do a network code scan and see what codes it responds with. Misfire detected. Fuel trim cylinder balance bank two. Invalid data received from the brake control module. Powertrain control module indicated traction control. Voltage reference output circuit low. Headlamp control circuit open. Ambient light sensor. Passenger compartment dimming. Hey, my goodness sakes. What other codes do we have here? Well, let's take a look at the uh, readiness monitors at the bottom here. So nothing's, well the catalyst and the EVAP system tests have not been run recently, so they're not complete, so it's had the battery disconnected or codes cleared recently. We've got a P0300 random misfire and a B219B. P Nunes 219B, fuel trim cylinder balance bank 2. Well, we'll have a look at some freeze frame data. So let's have a look at freeze frame data. We'll start for P0300 and the fuel trim code. Let's take a look at this one. Sure track is suggesting an oxygen sensor is going to fix it. Distance since last failure 90. trims on that bank were reasonable. Let's take a look at the other bank. Reasonable. Running for 3 minutes and 27 seconds. Hmm. Is it in closed loop? Ambient temperature 24, cooling temperature 195, so it was in closed loop, it was warmed up, must have been a warm restart. So that's the P219B. Let's have a look at the, um, the freeze frame record for the misfire. Let's see if that's set reasonably close to 90 drive cycles ago. 139 miles ago. Short-term fuel trim and long-term fuel trim of bank one are reasonable. It's reasonable on that side as well. Let's see how long they've been running. Nine minutes and 30 seconds. And it was 201 degrees Fahrenheit and ambient temperature is 44 Fahrenheit. So, again, warm engine. Let's have a look at misfire counters. 
see if it is truly random or if, it, if it's on the bank that has the problem, bank two. So data display, misfire data. Where's misfire data? Here's misfire data. Cylinder six. So it's not really random according to this. Misfire history is cylinder six. Right here, 154 misfires. Cylinder two, two, cylinder five. I wonder if they're feeling a misfire and that's why they think it's a transmission issue. Now they did say something about having an injector replaced. I'm going to have to get some more history on this vehicle before we go start condemning things here. I'm going to save this recording of misfires. So here's the uh, troubleshooter step tip in the snap-on scan tool for the P219B. It says the fuel trim cylinder balance diagnostic detects a rich or lean cylinder to cylinder air fuel ratio imbalance in each bank. The diagnostic monitors pre-catalyst heated oxygen sensors frequency and amplitude characteristics by calculating accumulated voltage over a predetermined sample period. An imbalance is indicated when multiple samples of the accumulated voltage are consistently higher than the desired value. Well, that sounds like a lot of smoke and mirrors. Traction control not be active. Engine is in closed loop. System voltage 10 to 32 volts. Greater than 100 seconds somewhere over minus 20. Speed is between 425 and 3500. Airflow, ethanol content less than 87%. Multiple samples of the pre-catalyst accumulated voltage are consistently higher than the desired value. Well, we're gonna have to see what's common to set that code because this is smoke and mirrors, really. We do have a misfire, so misfire was on cylinder number six, although it flagged P0300. Cylinder six, we're gonna have to see if that's on the side of the engine with bank two. So here is the cylinder firing order, 18726543, but the cylinders are still numbered the same as they were forever. So six cylinder six with the most misfire counts on it is on the side that has the fuel trim error. So I think we need to focus on the misfire more than anything. I'll try the uh, case histories here and see what's common. So I'm wondering if the two codes are related. The misfire on cylinder 6, which is being counted as random, P0300, and the fuel imbalance code. So I'm looking at static fuel rail pressure and I shut the engine off. And during a hot soak, the fuel pressure should increase because the fuel rail is heated by heat rising off the engine. We're going to let it sit for a few minutes and see if it does rise. Um, I don't know if those misfires occurred on a startup. Said nine minutes into the run cycle, so not really on a startup. The pressure is climbing on fuel rail pressure sensor one, but fuel rail pressure sensor two is pegged at 652 and hasn't really changed. This one's gone up to 700. Let's back up and see where we started at when I shut the engine off. So when I turned the engine off, it was about six, there's where it was running, it was about 607 and now it's 720. So it is rising, but if it's got a leaky injector that would result in a misfire on a startup, it would also result, or could also result in fuel uh, imbalance codes. Looking at Identifix here for that P0 or P219B, says cylinder misfire, fuel injectors, engine carbon cleaning procedures and fuel injectors, damaged air intake air filter, incorrect engine air filter, dirty fuel injectors, followed gasoline, failed heated oxygen sensors. It's suggesting to swap the O2s from one side to another to see if the problem follows the O2. Uh, I 
no TSBs on it. P0300. I'm sure there's going to be dozens of those fuel injectors. Q17 fuel injectors. Here we go again with internal combustion engines. 10 steps forward and 15 steps backwards. You know, we went years with no problem with fuel injectors. Now they're direct injected and it's a problem. Now the customer did mention something about a fuel injector being replaced. It would certainly be nice to know some more history on this before we delve into it. I'm also going to take it for a road test and see if I can record data on a road test and see if I can feel any stumble misfire problem. So I'm going to do a network code clear here. I got the key on engine off. I'm going to take this thing for a road test and see if I experience any problems. Watch some misfire counters. And talk to the customer about what's been done on this thing in the past. This is the first time I'm working on this vehicle, so I don't know any of the repair history on it. Because obviously this repair is not cut and dry. I just started it after that hot soak and there were no misfires. So I took this vehicle for about a 10 kilometer road test at various speeds including highway and was monitoring misfire history and I never counted a single misfire nor did I feel any misfires. But I did notice about halfway through the road test that the MIL came on. Let's see what code set. P219B, fuel trim bank, cylinder bank 2. Well, I'm going to have to talk with this customer and find out exactly what's been done already to this vehicle. It has 205,000 kilometers on it, so I don't know if the plugs are original. The customer hinted that an injector was replaced. It would certainly be nice to know what exactly has been done before we get any further. So we'll uh, pick up when we got some more details. So I got off the phone with the customer and he's looking up the repair history. He says one injector was changed. He's going to let me know which side. What I've done is I've swapped the left and right forward oxygen sensors and I'm going to drive the vehicle to town tomorrow which is about 35 kilometers one way and drive it around town and see if the same code re reappears. Uh, right now it's got, I'm going to clear all the codes out of it and I'm going to reset the fuel trims. Let's make sure the codes are gone. I'm going to reset the fuel trims which is in functional tests. Functional tests, output controls, fuel trim reset right here. And like I said, I'm going to drive it tomorrow. Now he's aware that the plugs are still original. It's got 205,000 kilometers on it, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a set of plugs in it. It probably won't fix it, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. So I've driven this truck for approximately 100 kilometers back and forth to town twice now. And on the second trip back to home from town, we've got the MIL on. Now, I never really noticed any transmission shifting issue, but it does feel kind of doggy, or in other words, lazy. So I haven't scanned it to see what codes reset. I've taken several recordings. The last recording was of uh, ignition data. So I've saved this recording, and now I'm going to go in and look at what code is, is set. Now, I did switch the forward oxygen sensors left and right bank let's see what code has got in here now P219B so that's the same code we had before so it's definitely not an oxygen sensor because we took the oxygen sensor for bank 2 and put it in bank 1 and bank 1 and bank 2 now I did get, all, get information from the customer and apparently the injector in number 6 was replaced before as well as some seals on the left bank and that's bank 2 so something's going on uh, on that bank relating affecting the fuel trims I want to see if there's any misfires I didn't feel any misfires 
but I'm going to see if there's any misfires in history. Where's misfire data? <clears throat> Come on, you can do it. Load the misfire data. No misfires on cylinder number six. No misfires on any cylinders at all. Nothing in history. So it hasn't set the P0300 code, and it's possible that that code was in the computer from prior, you know, when the injector had failed or whatever happened to the injector. The remember said number six injector was replaced. So it's possible that that code wasn't cleared out of the computer. Um, you would think they would do that, but... You know, I, I, I haven't talked to that mechanic that actually worked on it. So, the plot thickens. So, I'm driving this truck today, and the message pops up on the dash says, Service Trailer Brake Control. I see it's gone off now, but I'm going to check the chassis control module and see what code it's generating. Play codes. I don't recall if there was any trailer brake control module codes. Manual trailer brake apply request signal 2. Really? What's that a problem with the button or the control or something? Hmm. Well, let's try clearing the code and see what happens. Clear code. Oh, got to do a key on engine off. Okay, it cleared. And it came back. No message on the dash yet. But the code definitely returned. C1117. Well, that's secondary. I'm wondering if there isn't an actual transmission issue on this vehicle. Driving it around town just now, I noticed it's shifting kind of weird. As I said before, it felt like it was holding back. No codes in the tranny. Let's take a look at data, transmission data. We're going to record some transmission data and drive it around at city speed, stop and go, and see if we see any anomalies. So I'm watching uh, field trim data at a fast idle of about 1500 RPM. And you notice the long term field trim numbers are coming down negative 15 and negative 13 bank 2 being the worst that's the bank that has the fuel trim code there's also a tick in the engine as well which may or may not be related I've been the uh, functional test of fuel trim reset here I'm going to slow the RPM down to a consistent 1500 and it's it's actually subtracting 20% fuel on the bank 2 and 14% on bank 1. Let's bring up engine RPM if I can. So unfortunately the data disappears when I hit reset. 1700 RPM. This speed it's not bad but at a slightly lower speed it feels like it's stumbling slightly and when I hit reset you'll hear the engine smooth out so I'm starting to wonder if we have some injector problems or some uh, com carbon deposits on the intake valves being a direct injected engine this is problematic for that I did do an injector flow test and it failed for all four injectors on the right bank. Here's the automated injector balance test. Start the engine, let it idle. 
The ECM will pulse each injector once in consecutive order. When the injector is tested, a slight drop in engine speed should be noticed. Field pressure drop results will be recorded for individual cylinders and displayed at the end of the test. So it just tested cylinder number one. Oh, I see it pulled up the last results. Now it's testing cylinder number three. See, it says which, which cylinder it's testing. Cylinder two, sorry. And you'll notice a change in the fuel rail pressure when it activates an injector. And a dip in the engine speed when it activates the injector. See again a drop in the engine RPM, a spike in fuel pressure, and at the end of the test it's going to report the pressure drop for each injector. It's testing number six, number five, sorry. Now it's testing number six. That made a significant drop in the engine speed. I mean, there was number five and there was number six. Now it's going to test number seven. Notice the drop in engine RPM and then change in fuel pressure. And one more it's going to test. Number eight. So all the injectors on the right bank, 33, 36, 35, 37, and on the left bank, 24, 26, 25, 27. According to GM service information, a difference of more than 5 PSI indicates a problem with an injector. Well, 37 to 27 is 10 PSI. 35 to 25 is 10 PSI. 36 to 26 is 10 PSI. So we got some injector issues or carbon deposits on the valves or well we got to get some more information and talk to the customer about this. So we're back working on this uh, 2015 GMC Sierra with the 5.3 and the P219B code for uh, fuel trims. Uh, looking at cases on Identifix here and the majority of the cases are repaired by replacing injectors and, and cleaning intake valves. Uh, I did do an injector flow test and there is a TSB on this. Let's see if I can find this TSB. I think it was referenced in this case here. Uh, yes, yeah, special policy coverage. There is a, a problem that GM recognizes with the injectors and they provide a special policy, but only in the states of California, Connecticut, Delaware, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington. And we're not even in the states, so it doesn't apply. Um, basically what it boils down to is one or more of the injectors might cause a misfire and uh, this particular fault code and 150,000 miles 240,000 kilometers or 10 years but apparently this does not apply to Canadian vehicles 
Not that they're different, just you're out of luck. And they say change injectors as required, but they have a, a policy in here for checking the injectors, procedure for checking them, and I'll scroll down to that. No, I didn't find it. Hmm. Service procedure. Yeah. Okay, if any injector has a variance of 10% or greater from the average pressure drop, replace the injector. Well, let's have a look at my test results here. So here's one of the fuel injector balance test results that I did. I did it twice and got basically the same results. Injector number two is 40, roughly 43 PSI, but injector number one is 32. So, you know, that's roughly 10 PSI. 10% 10 of 42 is 4. 10% of 32 is 3. So a difference of 3 PSI, but I got four injectors that are flowing more on cylinders 2, 4, 6, and 8, and three injectors that are flowing less on cylinders 1, 3, 5, and 7, bank to bank. So which four of these failed injectors based on the 10% rule do I change? The four on the passenger side that are flowing more fuel? or the four on the driver's side that are flowing less fuel because this fault code relates to a, a, a fuel delivery imbalance. Personally, in my opinion, with 205,000 kilometers on it, to be safe, put a set of injectors in it. But apparently it's already had injector number six replaced on cylinder six. And that one is also a problem according to this test result. Now, the other possible cause of this is, is a misfire, and it's running uh, rich on both banks, but worse on bank two if you look at the fuel trims. Let's have a look at the fuel trims. So here's one of the many recordings that I made on road testing this vehicle, and in the top right here, you can see long-term fuel trim for bank one over the life of this recording ranged from negative four to negative 24, and long-term fuel trim on bank two range from negative 10 to negative 32 so bank 2 is worse for sure but is it worse because it has a random misfire on bank 2 and the O2 sensor is reporting a false lean condition because of the mechanical misfire and it's adding extra fuel based on that of course that should theoretically be positive not negative Hmm. I think before I go too far here, I'm going to recommend replacement of the plugs. While the plugs are out, I'm going to look in the combustion chamber with a borescope and see if I can see intake valves and uh, with the valve open through the combustion chamber uh, access through the spark plug hole and see if I can see deposits on the backs of the valves. Uh, Maybe we'll run a top engine cleaner through it and an injector flush and put a set of plugs in it and reevaluate it because changing all the injectors is going to be fairly expensive and fairly time consuming. So I think that's the approach I'm going to take first off, but I honestly don't have uh, good feelings about it. So there's a spark plug out of two, four, and six, I drop number, I'm sorry, four, six, and eight. This is number six. Doesn't look bad, but they're pretty worn. They look, appear to be the original plugs. I managed to get the bore scope in cylinder number six. I don't know how good this is gonna show up on the camera here, but you can see the carbon deposits on the valve That's the, that's the head of the valve right there, and the stem of the valve, and you can actually see the carbon deposits on the edge of the valve seat there. So this thing needs to be decarboned. I don't know how successful we'll be running top engine cleaner through it, but the alternative is to pull the fuel 
the intake manifold off and, and walnut shell blast the intake ports. If we put injectors in it, we'll certainly do that. But I think it's worth a shot to run some top engine cleaner through it. We're going to try that. So there's the other four spark plugs out of the other side. They're pretty worn. The gap is quite large. As I said, they're original. I don't think that's going to make a difference, but it can't hurt to put a set of plugs in it. Fundamentals. So what we're going to do now is we're going to disable the fuel pump. I'm going to start it and run it, and I believe this is the fuel pump relay here in the corner. Uh, here it says it's item 59. And 59 is up in that top left corner. Yeah, so we're going to run it, pull this relay out. That should run out the primary fuel pressure. Then I can take the fuel line off, put a fitting on there, hook my flusher up to it. Going to use this AC Delco upper engine cleaner and fuel injector cleaner. And we're going to use combustion chamber cleaner through the throttle body. I was looking for a central vacuum port to introduce it. There, you can't go into the brake booster line anymore because that goes down to the vacuum pump. Uh, purge solenoid is attached directly here. I don't see any other. Where's the PCV? I think this is the PCV down here. So maybe we can take that central line off there. But I'm going to spray the cleaner, upper engine cleaner, in through the throttle bore while it's running. Uh, I got a hose on it so we don't die in here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So you need a release tool to release that quick connect. There it is, pictured in there. Uh, pull the valve cover plastic trim off. And disconnect that number uh, 135, number 5 ignition coil, so a little bit more room to get in there with that tool. So I'm running on the injector flush agent now. Dialed up about 55 pounds of fuel pressure. I did put a pressure gauge on this line because, believe it or not, I've still got 70 pounds pressure. The fuel pump is still running with that relay just removed, which doesn't make sense. I noticed when I turned the key on, I had fuel coming out of that line, so I just put a fitting in there and put a gauge on it instead of disabling it. Can't explain why the fuel pump's still running, but regardless, we're running off this cleaner now, and we're gonna run some combustion chamber cleaner through it. I'm gonna try to run it at a fast idle with a stick on the throttle. Air flow sensor electrical plug unplugged, otherwise, it won't run. So it's been running about 15 minutes now, and I've ran two cans of uh, combustion chamber cleaner into the throttle body. As I said, normally I would put it through a uh, central vacuum port, but there isn't a convenient one on this vehicle. It does have a what appears to be a valve train noise, lifter noise in this thing too. It's starting to run out of fuel now. So I'm going to clear all the codes out of this thing. Key on engine off. There's a trailer brake problem now that's manifested over the last drive cycle. Driving back home yesterday from town, several times the tra service trailer brake system message came up on the dash and it had set a fault code. Uh, I have no idea, nothing related to the drivability problem, I'm sure, but just adds to the interesting anomalies on this truck. So we're doing the network codes clear, 16 controllers cleared, going to go into the engine, into functional tests, and output controls, and we're going to reset the fuel trims. Reset. And then we're going to start it and run it and see how it runs. 
take it for a good road test. Let's bring up uh, fuel system data and we're going to start it up. So I just came back from about a 10 kilometer road test and here's the results of the fuel trim. Bank 2 still hit a max of negative 25 and bank 1 negative 21. It's running currently about 15 and 17 percent negative which is not quite enough to trip a fuel trim code but definitely something going on. I think those injectors are delivering more fuel than they should be. And I honestly don't believe the injector flush helped significantly. I'm going to save this recording. File. Save. Collected data. Two zero one five. TMC five three. So let's we'll save this recording. I don't know if it's wishful thinking, but it does seem to run a little better. But it's, I still haven't driven it as much as I drove it in the last few days. Let's see if there's any codes. Check engine light is not on. Uh, well, that was me starting the vehicle because the fuel rail pressure had been low. Let's clear these codes. And when I first started it after, I should have ran it and then shut it off and then cleared the codes, but I cleared the codes and then tried to start it and it was difficult starting because it was out of fuel. Uh, let's try the uh, automatic injector flow test that we did before and see what the results are. So it did number one cylinder, 28.7. Now it's gonna run it for a few seconds, do number two cylinder. Thirty-eight point seven. So difference of ten PSI from right bank to left bank. You can see the RPM drop, fuel rail pressure. So that was number three. That was twenty nine point eight. Number four is going to be tested right now. So you can see the RPM drop, the pressure change in the rail, and it calculates it. 43.9, wow. I don't like the valve train noise that's in this thing either. It's setting some kind of a fault code in there, probably the trailer brake control system. That one's 38.2, 30.5. Testing number six now. Testing number seven. Pressure drop 30.5. And testing number eight. Forty three point five. So you can see between the 
two, four, six, and eight range is anywhere from 38.2 to a high of 43.9. And over on the left bank, bank one, range from 28.7 to 30.5. So these injectors are flowing less. There's no specification for what this pressure drop should actually be. It's more or less comparison from one injector to the other. GM says to change any injector that is 10% 10, 10 plus or minus from the others. Well, we, uh, we got four injectors on one bank that are greater than 10% flow than the four injectors on the other bank. So which four do we replace? Personally, given the age of the vehicle, I would recommend a set of injectors and while the intake plenum is off, cleaning the intake ports and the intake valves with uh, walnut shells. Now whether or not we get to do that is going to depend on whether the customer has uh, wants to carry on with uh, diagnosing this problem.